Whitespark's Google business profile got unverified. So in this video, I'm gonna show you step-by-step -step exactly how I got our Google business profile re-verified with the video verification process. So funny story, while testing something for our new GPP management software, it's awesome. Our software team managed to get Whitespark's Google business profile unverified. They were trying to figure out how international phone numbers work via the API. And so they thought it would be a smart idea to set Whitespark's address to be uh, the home office in UK. That's basically like setting your address to be the White House in the US. And then they were like, oh, well, what would happen if we remove the address and make it a service area business? So they did that. And then they set the service area to all of Canada and all of the United Kingdom. <laughs> So yeah, Google was like WTF and unverified the profile. And honestly, I don't blame them. I can't believe we didn't even get suspended. So whatever, now I've got to re-verify the profile and good news, it allows me to figure out the process and make this video for you. At first I was thinking this will be fine, whatever, no big deal. I'll just, you know, request another postcard and get it re-verified. But unfortunately, when I looked at my options, I only have one option and you might be facing this too. It's just video verification. Google is really only giving that option these days. And so we got to figure this out. But unfortunately, it's apparently buggy as hell. The Google business profile community forum is absolutely packed with people complaining that they're having all kinds of problems with the video verification process. So I've gone deep into the rabbit hole of how to do video verification. And I'm gonna share with you the exact roadmap that you need to follow to get through this thing. And I even made you this really awesome, detailed, comprehensive checklist with everything you need to know. If you want to copy this file, just let me know in the comments and I'll send it to you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through the checklist just so that you kind of have all the information you need. And then you and I together will re-verify Whitespark's Google business profile. So first off, I have to give a huge shout out and a huge thank you to all of the Google business profile product experts that helped me put this document together. All right, so let's talk about getting your Google business profile in order. Basically, you may not even be eligible for a Google business profile, so you should read the uh, guidelines that talk about eligibility. I have that in step 1.1. And then you should make sure you're not breaking any of Google's guidelines. Uh, if you are, your verification will likely get rejected. So I've actually gone through and broken down the common reasons why a Google business profile may be violating the guidelines. So I'm gonna go through those for you. So we'll start with your business name. Don't have any extra keywords in there that are not actually part of your business name that you do business as in the real world. And make sure that your business name uh, on your Google business profile matches your signage, your documents, uh, all that kind of stuff. Next, and this is a really big one that a lot of people get wrong, is choosing to show or hide your address. So how do you know if you're gonna show or hide your address? Here is the rule. If you have a staffed location that anyone can walk into during your stated business hours, they don't have to ring the doorbell, they can just walk in and there's somebody there that can serve them and says, welcome to business name, then you can show your address on your profile. Now, if that isn't the case, if your business is by appointment only or whatnot, you should not show your address on your Google business profile. You should hide your address. So if, if during your stated business hours, someone just walks up to your business address and can't get service by a staff member that works there, then you should have your address hidden. So this is a service area business like a plumber or if you are a makeup artist that goes to your client's locations. And even if you sometimes will service people in your home, if you're not staffed full time all the time during your state of business hours, your address should be hidden. Other things with your address, you should not have a PO box or virtual office that those are against the guidelines. And you should make sure that it matches on all of your official documentation, like your business registration, your tax documents, your utilities. Uh, service areas, uh, a lot of people get this one wrong. They have this massive service area set. There's a guideline that says that your service area can't be more than a two hour driving distance from your address. So you can't set a massive service area of the whole country or the whole state or multiple states. The bounding area of your service area must be within a two hour driving distance. For the phone number, your phone number needs to match what's on your website and it needs to match what's on all 
all your citations, your business listings around the web on your on important sites. So if you're using something like a call tracking number on your Google business profile, turn that off for the purpose of getting verified and then you can put it on back on later. Uh, your business hours on your Google business profile should match what's on your signage, what's on your website and what's on your prominent business listings. And here's another one that trips people up. Your business description should not have any promotions or phone numbers in it. All right, so if you've gone through your Google business profile and you've made sure that everything is eligible, you're within the guidelines, you don't have any problems, next step, you wanna get your website and your citations matching the information on your Google business profile. So that's name, address, phone number, hours, website URL on your business listings. Your website's an obvious one. So in your footer, on your contact page, wherever you list that information, make sure that it matches what you have on your Google business profile. That's your, you can consider your website your most important citation. And then you should make sure that your name, address, phone number, website URL are accurate on all of the prominent business directories in your country and for your industry. So if you're a lawyer in the US, you'd wanna hit uh, data Axel, that is a very important data source that Google references. Sites like Better Business Bureau, your Facebook page, your Yelp page, your LinkedIn page, all that information should match uh, with what you have on your Google Business Profile. And then, you know, some of the more prominent legal directories, if your business is listed on that, they should match there as well. So make sure you get those things all matching in an order because I think Google's automated system will check against that to make sure that the information you're submitting on your profile is what they're also seeing on the internet. All right, step three, this is where you're going to plan out what you're gonna show in your video. And there's four key components to this. So the first part is you have to sh prove your location. And you typically do that by starting your video from uh, on the street, showing the building and the surrounding buildings. Then you have to walk up and show the address on the actual building itself. If you can, if you have time to get in this, into the video, you and you can see the street sign right next to where you are. You won't really have time. You won't have time to run down the street because you have to do the whole video in one continuous thing. So you can get the street sign in there if you can. So right now you're planning and you're thinking, where am I going to start my video and what I'm going to what am I going to show? So get that in order. Now the next thing you have to plan out is your proof of management. And so there's a few different ways that you can do that. You want to prove that you're authorized to represent this business by unlocking the door to the business, that's a big one, or unlocking the door to a branded service vehicle if you're a service area business, that's another great way to do it. Operating a point of sale system or a payment processing system, any of those can prove that you are uh, a legitimate operator of the business, if you wanna prove your management. Next, you wanna prove that your business is in operation. So show some things like tools that you use, uh, stock if you sell any, any products, uh, your business cards, your marketing materials, showing that kind of stuff demonstrates that yeah, this is a real business that's in operation. And finally, this is not necessarily required. We've seen lots of video verifications get through without this, but it can be helpful. The more evidence you have, the better. So this is your proof of business existence. And that would be through things like uh, your business license and your business registration. Those are great. And the information on those should match your name, address, phone number that you have on your Google business profile. A utility bill that has your business name, address, and phone number on it, or just name and address. That's a really helpful document. Any tax documents you have the, from the, your country's tax authority with your name and address on it, also really great documents to prove that this is a real business that exists. And then the final thing that I have in section three for planning is a little template you can follow. You just fill, it, fill in the blanks and that'll kind of give you a script to follow for recording your video. Okay, step four, you wanna get your settings right. There are a number of settings that can have an impact on the success of your video. One, make sure location services are turned on on your mobile device. The details of how to do that are in the checklist. Two, whatever app you're gonna to use to record, if you're recording in Safari or Chrome, make sure that that has access to use location services. Three, it can be really helpful to reduce the video recording quality. So if you're recording at like 4K, your video file size will get so big that Google's upload system will choke. So you wanna to try to reduce that to the smallest quality of video recording that you can get. I have instructions in the checklist. And four, if you've already tried to verify and have been unsuccessful, you may have some uploaded videos in your Google business profile. It's good to clear those out so you can go uh, under the settings of your Google business profile and delete any previous recordings. I have instructions in the checklist for that too. All right, you got your settings right. 
you got your Google business profile all set up nicely. You know what evidence you're gonna show and you've got a plan of how, what order you're gonna show these things in. Make a rehearsal video before you actually record your video. Just do a trial run. Go, go out onto the street, record your video, see how long it takes you. You gotta get this thing, I'm gonna say under two minutes. I could not get a two minute video to upload. You gotta get this thing under two minutes. You gotta show all the stuff that you need to show quickly. And so do a test run, get the feel for it, so that when you go to record the actual thing through Google's app, that you can get it done in the right amount of time and that you're showing everything you need to. Okay, now you're ready to actually record your Google Business Profile Verification video. I'm gonna walk you through the actual steps by doing it with the WhiteSpark Google Business Profile. And I actually pre-recorded this part, so uh, this is something I did a couple days ago. So I will walk you through me recording my verification video and explaining the steps as I do it. And then you can use this as your guide when you make your video. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is open up your mobile device and run a search either in Google Maps or in a mobile browser. If you start on the desktop, then what'll happen is Google will just give you a QR code and send you to your mobile device anyway, so you're better off to start here. So here I'm in the Google Maps app and I type in my business name, WhiteSpark, and I'm gonna choose the option here from the autocomplete I know it says United Kingdom and that's because my service areas are messed up and that's what I'm trying to fix with this verification process. So as soon as I tap on WhiteSpark United Kingdom here, it'll take me to the next step. So there's my profile. I'm gonna scroll down to where I see uh, you're not verified, get verified. Tap that. Now it's gonna ask you to enter your address. Uh, so this is your address of your business. Now it gives me business video, it's my only option. So you're probably in the same situation. So choose that next. And now I'm just gonna give me three uh, sort of pointers about doing this, uh, little notes that you should read. Uh, I have these all covered in the checklist. And then three tips for how to make sure that your video is good. Uh, okay, great. The one tip they should have given you here is that don't make it too long. So allow camera and microphone access. It's just gonna prompt you as soon as you hit next. Yes, I allow camera access. And now you're actually in the filming app. So this is how it looks. And so there's a little note there. You can tap that on the right to get that to disappear. But whenever you're ready, you're gonna hit the button, a big red button in the middle there and start your recording. Here we go. And so I'm showing the street. This is the street. And I'm walking up from the street to the front door. So you wanna be able to show the surrounding area so that Google can verify this on Street View. Then I walk up and I deliberately point at the house number. I want Google to be able to see the house number of this location. So you do this either in a business location too. And then I show them that the door is locked. See, it's locked, ah, but look at me, I'm a manager. I can open this because uh, it's actually my house. So yes, I'm authorized to uh, access this location. And now I think I'm just taking my shoes off, wasting precious seconds. <laughs> and then I run up the stairs. At this point, I didn't realize I had to run, but, but I'm walking up the stairs. This is my office. Look, this is where I film all my YouTube videos. Okay, here I am. Uh, first thing I wanna show them is that I'm authorized to operate this business. This is one of the proof of operation. I'm like, yes, look, I can log into our Stripe account. This is where WhiteSpark processes all its payments. So I show me logging into my Stripe account. Now I'm gonna show some stuff on my desk. I've got a business card with my name on it. Ideally that yours would have your address. Here's a document from Canyon Revenue Agency. I'm showing that with my company's name and address. Then I'm showing uh, my banking statement with the company name and address on it. So this is some, some obvious documentation that this business exists at this address. And then I show a bag full of marketing materials, which is more further proof of operation. I got stickers, I got these little Lego characters, socks, things that we take to conferences and give people. So that's it, it two minutes and 12 seconds. And look at this, your video can't be uploaded. Ugh. Thanks, Google. Okay, so I did go slightly over two minutes. I'm gonna try again. I'll try to do a little bit faster. So let's see if that one works. Little did Darren realize that it was going to take eight more attempts before a successful upload. What follows is a dramatic reenactment of those attempts. Enjoy. <laughs> I 
I totally did it. I ran. <laughs> I'm out of breath. But I totally friggin' did it. Look at this. You're almost done. Almost done, Darren. And now you just gotta upload this video that you took. I think it said like 49 seconds. <sighs> Google making me sweat here. Okay. I'm gonna upload the video. Let's see what happens. Uploading video 3%, 6, 8, 10%. Come on. Come on, video. You can do it. 70%. A lot of people fail at 99%. So if after all of this, it fails at 99, I'll be pretty frustrated. Oh my God. Your video is being reviewed. It may take up to five days until your video is reviewed. You can delete your verification video at any time. Learn more about video verification. Done. Tapping done appears to do nothing. Done, 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 done. Okay, I'm done. It doesn't do anything when you tap done. Okay, so guess I'll be back in up to five days to let you know how this went. We'll keep working on this video. Up to five days later. All right, it's been a couple of days and I wanted to check in on the status of my video verification. And there's something interesting in my Google Business Profile dashboard. It says pending edits. All my other profiles say either verified or published. So pending edits is an interesting update. And then if I look at my Google Business Profile in search, there's this whole list of edits. So it's looking at my hours, which I actually didn't even touch my business name, my website, my category. So it's almost like my entire profile is under review at this moment, which I guess is a good sign. It means they're taking a look at things. But uh, when your business it needs to be verified, you can't publish Google posts, you can't upload photos, you can't respond to reviews. And it looks like I can actually do all of that. It's like I can click add an update and I can add one right now. I don't know if it's gonna go live, but that's an interesting thing is that my profile seems almost back, but not quite back. So I still haven't received an email from Google saying your profile has been successfully re-verified. I'm still waiting for that, but uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I did also hear from somebody else who said that they had this situation and then it just failed and they had to do it again. So I don't know, the jury is still out at this point, but. That's an update for today. Nine more days later. Okay, I think it's time to close this thing out. I think we are successfully verified. If I look at my profile in Google, I can see like it doesn't have a little exclamation. There's no little signal or little sign that says, you know, you need to verify your profile. If I look at it in the uh, Google Business Profile Help like contact form, it does have a little verified badge on it. So that's a positive. The only thing outstanding is that if I look at it in the dashboard, it still says pending edits. And now if I look at my profile, you can see that, yeah, my service area is still totally messed up. And if I go under edit, I can see that it still has this phone number and it still has this service area, but it says that it may take up to 30 days for my edits to be published. But I'm calling it verified. Google never sent me a single email about it saying, congratulations, your profile is now verified. I got no notification, but it looks like it's verified. I can do everything I want on my profile. So I guess it worked. Ideally in the future, Google will send an email. And let you know when it worked, but here we are. We did it. So please review my checklist. I think that would be very helpful for you to get through this video verification process. Uh, my apologies on behalf of Google for uh, how painful it is and go ahead and drop me some comments in the in, in the, on the video or wherever you're seeing this and uh, i'll i'll try to help you out okay see you next time